Hello everyone, I am The Weather Dude. Welcome back and today we're going to be talking about the newly developed Invest 95L that could become our next potential tropical storm. That would be Tropical Storm Grace. Before I get started, however, be sure to like and subscribe because sadly most of you do not like or subscribe and it does help my channel grow a lot and I really would appreciate it. So consider hitting those two buttons and we're going to get started. So Looking at Invest 95L, of course, we just talked about Fred in the last video, so if you haven't checked that out, be sure to check that out after this video. But it's August. We're starting to go on this little upscale here. Actually, let me change my uh, my my color. Uh, we're going on the uptick, right? This is what starts to happen climatologically in August. Um, and, it, and climatologically speaking, we could see this happen through September and even October. There's still a little spike up. And by the end of the October, November tends to be a little quieter. Uh, and hurricane season ends right about here. But notice, December can still have activity. Now, December compared to, say, like May or June is still a little less. But just know that uh, activity is possible in December, although it's not all that common. Um, but still, hurricane season runs through the end of November. So we still got like 85, 90% plus of the hurricane season remaining. Um, so let's look at Invest 95L right here. And it's been upgraded to a medium chance of development here. 40% chance, at 40 to 60 is considered medium. So you can see here, uh, 10 to 30 is, is considered yellow, which is low probability. 40 to 60 is medium. And then 70 to 100 is considered high. Um, so let's look at this. Um, tropical wave over the eastern tropical Atlantic, uh, several hundred miles west, southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands, producing some showers and storms. We could see gradual development and we could see a depression or a storm by early next week as it moves westward around 20 miles an hour. So it's moving pretty fast, uh, near 20. Uh, still pretty fast. Usually the systems move about 12 to 15 miles an hour or 12 to 16. Uh, the system could reach the leewards and the windwards um, by the time we head into late Saturday. So here it is. And if you want to call it a quote unquote cone, yes, Eastern Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico and Lesser Antilles, you guys are all in it again. Um, and with Fred, we actually did have tropical storm force winds observed in southwestern Puerto Rico and Eastern Dominican Republic. So we can see the same thing repeat with this system. Now notice the chance for it to develop in the next five days is higher than in the next two. So expect development maybe in the next three to five days of or more, a 40% chance of the, uh, uh, again. Uh, looking at the uh, current storm information, sustained winds according to tropical tidbits, about 30 miles an hour. Pressure, 1,010 millibars. So similar to how uh, Fred was when it was a pre-tropical uh, pre -tropical system. Radius of maximum wind, which in that case is 30 miles an hour, goes at about 50 nautical miles, so about 55-ish miles from center. Um, so it's slightly a bigger wind radius than what we have with Fred. If you look at Fred real quick, uh, radius of maximum wind is 40 nautical miles, so it's a little bit less with Fred um, than it is with this system. So maybe a bigger wind field is certainly what it looks like here looking at this system. Looking at it on satellite, it looks, it looks quite lopsided. Uh, one, for one thing, it's moving pretty fast. Um, as you can see, at 8 a.m., uh, we'll get an update for this at 2 p.m., but at 8, the center was um, at about 33 degrees west and about 11 or 12 degrees north. So looking at that, so 33 was back here. So center is about here, most likely. A um, lot of convection associated with it, mostly on the south side. Again, it's kind of similar to Fred at one point. Um, still a lot of convection. It is moving quite fast. Like I, I haven't sped this up really. I mean, it is actually moving fast. Like it was at the center of the screen at the beginning of the loop, and it's pretty much leaving the screen at the end of the loop. So uh, a lot of convection. We're starting to see a little bit on the north side start to blossom up. South side convection is also blasting. So um, signs are strengthened, but you don't see too much on the eastern side. So it's a little lopsided. I mean, if there's too much convection on the eastern side or on the west side, both cases considered a lopsided system. But again, it's just an invest. So we still got a lot of time, but you could definitely see there's some sort of broad rotation there, but more so to the, to the, uh, untrained eye, it just looks like a, an area of convection that's moving from East to West. And that's kind of what it looks like to me as well, but there could be a little area of broad rotation. And according to the European right here, you can see it, um, sort of a broad elongated rotation, sort of like this. And we do have some strong winds on the Eastern side. Uh, but we don't really have that um, um, that convection over there um, either. So let's look at the sea surface temperatures for where this the center is. 
center sitting at about on 82 degree waters. And if we follow the track, all right, so if we bring it, let, let me actually zoom out a little bit more. Um, so here it goes, moving in this direction towards the north and west, west, northwest, waters will continue to get warmer, 83, 84, maybe. So, so similar to what um, Fred went through. But waters could be a bit cooler, of course, behind a tropical system. Sometimes waters can drop ever so slightly in temperature. But still, 82, 83 is still warm enough uh, for a tropical system. Um, and let's look at the uh, winds here. All right, so you can see the wind gusts are recorded to be around 40 miles an hour right there, according to the European model. That's pretty much right now. Uh, we're going to get into the models a little bit later, so I won't show too much. Um, but it could continue to move towards the west, and we'll see if it could develop a low-level center like this, a closed low um, with some potentially strong winds now on the north side. Uh, so we'll see uh, with the European model. But we're going to look at the models a little bit later. Um, let's look at the dry air map. How much dry air is there right now? Um, the reason that there's so much convection on the south side and not the north side is because you can see right here, the north side has plenty of uh, Saharan dust. Um, and there's just plenty ahead of it too, but we'll see if it can retreat faster. The storm is moving a little bit faster and that does hurt it, right? We saw that with Elsa, that does hurt its strengthening. Um, how? Well, first of all, if it's moving at near 20 miles an hour, it can't enjoy the good environment that it's in as much. So it's gonna be a little bit weaker than if it were to move slower. Um, also a faster moving system can fall apart quicker. If it's, you know, like, let's say there's like an analogy, like a runner, if he runs too fast, he might fall over. Uh, depending on his training, of course. Um, and that's the same thing with this. If the storm moves too fast, it might it might lose its strength like Elsa did. Um, so this storm is moving pretty fast. Not as fast as Elsa, but it is moving pretty fast. So because there's dry air on the north side, there's convection developing on the south side. It's got to, has to adapt to the environment that it's in. So also another reason um, if it's moving too fast is because if it moves faster than the dry air is retreating, it might catch up to the dry air and then pretty much like pretty much like the storm could kill itself essentially and just pretty much fall apart completely. So um, I know we the storm, uh, obviously 95L, I'm sure the storm, a lot of storm trackers don't want it to die, but uh, we will keep an eye on it for sure. Uh, looking at the wind shear, um, again, based off the coordinates that it's at, so here are the coordinates again, 33 degrees west and about 12 degrees north, but it has moved since then. Um, so let's look at it on the shear map. I will actually change my color once again because the color is a little bit darker. Um, so looking at this, uh, pretty much staying in this zone. So wind shear is pretty low. There is some little areas of higher shear out ahead of it with just the one little area. Other than that, for the most part, shear is pretty low as the same environment pretty much that Fred was in. Uh, so 90, Invest 95L, not too much uh, shear for you. Um, here is the low as of 8 o'clock this morning. Again, here at the same coordinates that I just showed you earlier. Uh, but we do have some model tracks coming out on it, and the GEFS model tracks, a little concerning because a couple of them, quite a, or just a couple of them, but they do make it 900, 980 millibars, 970 even, as low as 960. Uh, so a couple make it a very strong system. Um, but again, I like to look at these more so for um, reference to track, not strength. Um, though we have other models and guidance for that. But you can see it brings it west towards the same general area, Couple models bring it into the Caribbean, couple bring it north towards the Bahamas. Um, and even one one model, or actually two-ish, do have a landfall in Florida in the next 10 days. But uh, Florida, I would say, focus on Fred right now. I, I, I gotta invest 95L for you. Um, that's just waiting in the wings. Um, but here is 95L. Now the GEPS model tracks, uh, these sets bring a little bit farther north, closer to the Bahamas. Uh, and even Bermuda, maybe a couple, have it getting close to Bermuda. Some have it, a few have it going through Key West. So these sets of tracks bring it farther north. Some of the GEFS tracks have a little bit further south. So of course, there's a little bit of model disagreement. Uh, intensity guidance, um, have it going up pretty steadily after about 48 hours. So again, over the next few days, because it's after the two day point. And quite a few have it a strong tropical storm. Uh, quite a few have a, have a category one hurricane. I know there's only a few models on here, but Pretty much three out of the four, or four out of the five, I, I think there's four though. Three out of four have it a category one hurricane. So definitely something to keep an eye on. I'd say it's worth watching, uh, considering that it's in the same development you know, area that Fred was in. And the fact that Fred successfully developed, I know every storm is different, but 
This one certainly looks like it could develop over the next five days. So here we have uh, some European track guidance here, and you can see it brings it in a west-northwest direction, same movement that Fred is doing. And I know I'm comparing it a lot to Fred, just to just to, um, for comparison's sake. But you can see it, then it makes a little bit more of a northwest turn according to these. Now these have it all over the place, because a couple bring it closer to Bermuda, a couple have it all the way near, almost near South America. But the, the mean, the majority, do bring it near Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, the Bahamas, uh, and then maybe even further on from there. So this is the European track guidance, um, the European ensemble track guidance, I should say. So bring it a little bit farther uh, towards the west, somewhere you have to watch. Uh, so GFS, so I fast forwarded a little bit and I, I selected the Western Atlantic region and I fast forwarded to when it was starting to show up on the map. So all these models, the GFS, Canadian and European that I show you will all start at Saturday morning on the 14th. I'm kind of disregard Fred on your screen. That was another video if you want to go watch that one. But uh, here is 95L, um, potentially tropical storm grace. We don't know yet, but 95L for now. According to the GFS, hits the Lesser Antilles by Sunday morning on the 15th, and then moving through the Dominican Republic, and again, right between Cuba and the Bahamas, like the same track as Fred. Um, and then moving to the north and west, uh, not much happening with it. It might merge up with some moisture off the Carolinas, maybe the remnants of Fred, and maybe develop um, a tropical system out there. But again, same sort of track. So it brought it through this way and then this way and pretty much having a Florida landfall actually um, wasn't very strong, but there was a Florida landfall by early Friday morning, um, whatever was left of it at that point. Again, it all depends on land interaction. Um, Canadian model, here we have it and it looks a little stronger. Again, we're fast forwarded to Saturday morning, the 14th. Um, so there it is looking a little stronger. And then as we bring it west, this one goes right over Puerto Rico. So uh, that's not good for you guys. Thankfully, it looked like only the southwestern portions of Puerto Rico got the tropical storm force winds from Fred, but I know a lot of uh, there's a lot of heavy rain that's still falling as well. Um, moving to the north and west, pretty much near the Bahamas, southern Florida, then out over the eastern Gulf, and then it ends after 10 days, so I can't really go farther. But there it is, right over the northeastern Gulf of Mexico, um, still sustaining some tropical characteristics. Uh, last model here, the European model. Here it is, again, starting. Now, this time we're starting because every click is 24 hours. So we're starting at 8 p.m. on Friday, 8 p.m. Saturday, 8 p.m. Sunday. Again, right over Puerto Rico and even stronger than what the Canadian had it. So that's not good for you guys, I know. Uh, 8 p.m. Monday over the Dominican Republic. 8 p.m. Tuesday, it's over Cuba. Uh, 8 p.m. Wednesday, um, still near the northwestern part of Cuba. So stay near Havana and Key West in Florida. And then 8 p.m. Wednesday and or excuse me, Thursday, and this is Friday. Um, still some moisture, but it may be, according to the European, it's going to weaken. But I would just focus on the track for right now. Moving in this direction, maybe closer to New Orleans uh, instead of the Florida Big Bend. So we're going to watch the Invest 95L. we got to watch Fred. There's a lot to watch in the tropics. So thank you guys for watching this Invest 95L uh, video. Potential tropical storm, maybe Grace. We'll see. Uh, I am the Weather Dude signing off. Till next time, I'll catch you guys in the next video.